Good morning, everybody. How is everyone doing this morning? <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I'm so delighted that all of you are here. We have about 1,800 people who have flown all the way to Las Vegas, which is a new city for us. By the way, my first reaction is, wow, pretty classy venue, right? <laughs> so, um, so why are we here? I just want to take a couple moments to um, just frame uh, what the purpose of these three days are. One is, I think we all believe that DevOps is important. I think that we all believe that DevOps creates genuine business and societal value and that we need DevOps to make our own work humane, that uh, you know, this helps us work in a better way, uh, very different from the way that we've been working for decades past. Uh, based on some feedback, I actually am going to show something that I've never really shown before in a, a venue like this, which is really my version and my definition of DevOps. So this is slightly adapted uh, from the definition that we used in the DevOps handbook. And specifically, it is a set of architecture, technical practices, and cultural norms that allow us to increase our ability to deliver application and services more quickly and safely, which enables us to rapidly experiment and innovate and deliver the fastest uh, delivery to our customers, ensuring world-class security, stability, and reliability uh, so that we can win in the marketplace. And, and so uh, this actually came from a series of conversations with business leaders who, in my first definition, without the parts in red, they said, I'm not sure if I actually care about that. <laughs> so uh, I incorporated their feedback into the definition. But of all the definitions I've seen of DevOps, the one, maybe the, my favorite uh, is really from John Smart, for many years he was a former uh, head of ways of working at Barclays, and his version of DevOps is this. It is better value, sooner, safer, and happier. And, and I think that's just, that's just a powerful way to frame what this is all, all about. You know, in the Phoenix project that came out in 2013, uh, that one of the last, uh, in the last pages, there was a phrase that is one of my favorite phrases in the, in the Phoenix project. And Eric uh, says, I want to improve the lives of one million IT workers in the next five years. So similar to how I amended the, you know, my own personal definition of DevOps, you know, here's how I would have uh, rewritten it, uh, knowing what I know now. And it is this. Uh, in maybe the next version, the next uh, print edition, uh, I think Eric would say, I want to improve the lives of over 40 million technology workers in the next 10 years. And, and so why do I say that? So our friends at IDC, the uh, great, another great analyst firm, he, they have some fascinating statistics. They said, uh, you know, in globally, there's about 21 million developers, of which only 11 are full-time. The rest are part-time um, or hobbyists um, or other types of developers. But, then, you know, that's not the entire technology value stream. We have to include the other 18 million software professionals that make the software delivery process work, right? So that includes everything from QA to operations, infrastructure, security, analysts, right? All the things that need to happen in order to create value for the customer. So uh, I like that, but I think that it almost really diminishes really what the mission is ahead of us. One of the quotes, that I, a statistic that just blew me away came from Joseph Jacks. He's famous for many things, uh, but he recently created something called Open Source Software Capital. And he made a very audacious claim. He said, open source will push us towards a world by 2033, there will be a billion software engineers. Right? And you, know, you may argue with me and say, you know what, it's not a billion, maybe it's not 500 million, maybe it's 600 million. But I think the point is, we are talking about hundreds of millions of people doing software because every organization is a software organization. Uh, and if you believe that, then really, these are the conditions that will generate more economic value than anything that we have seen in our lifetime. And, and so I think that really, in my mind, sets the stage of why DevOps is so important. So why are we here today? Uh, first off, I think we're all here in this room uh, taking time off of uh, your daily work because we want to transform our own organizations. So that's uh, certainly one of them, and you're going to hear many talks like that uh, on the stage. Secondly, we, you're here to learn. We're here to learn what we need to learn. Um, and then I think there's actually a third one that I've, I've heard, which is uh, we need to meet who we need to meet and we get re-energized to keep up the fight. In other words, I come here to get re-energized about the mission. Yes, I learn some new things, meet some new people, but I also get the energy to fight all the conservative leaders who not only don't get it, but they're actually out to sabotage me. <laughs> and I leave with hopefully enough energy to make it one more year. So, <laughs> so I, I'm cognizant of that, and I think uh, 
that, that really frames what the programming goals are. So one of the things I want to do, based on more feedback from many of you, uh, which is really framed very explicitly what the goals of the DevOps Enterprise Summit are. So uh, I'll speak about the first two, uh, just, uh, and then I'll mention the others in more detail. The first is, uh, with the program committee, uh, we actually create a very explicit statement of what our goals are uh, for the first time this year. And one is actually to make it uh, the best DevOps Enterprise Summit ever. And I, I, it sounds obvious, but it sure does shape the decisions we make. And I think it's resulted in you know, some fantastic outcomes. And it's forced us, in some cases, to take more risks. And in some cases, says, you know, there's certain things that we want to do in a safer, uh, you know, uh, more predictable way. Um, and I'm convinced that you know, just having goals like this actually do lead to better outcomes. Um, another one that I'll talk a little bit more later is about we really want to make sure that every conference attendee achieves their goals. And to put that into context, I want to share with you the program committee. I'm so grateful for every one of the program committee members uh, who have helped, in some cases, since the very, very beginning uh, for the last five years. Uh, we meet weekly. and. Uh, uh, you know, if you knew what they had to put up with, you would rightly wonder why they would be on a program committee like this. Uh, but I think it's because, like you, we all have our own goals and aspirations. We have things that we want to learn, and all of those are advanced through the creation of this event. So how do we uh, create the programming to achieve uh, the goals? In other words, what problems are we trying to solve? So one portion of that uh, that I think is very important are the repeat experience reports. In other words, uh, we are following uh, technology leaders through their journey and allowing them to speak year over year just to see what happens to them. Right? So we're like a documentary filmmaker that traces, you know, that tracks the journey of these technology leaders. And we can ask questions like, do we like what we see? What happens to them? Right? Is, is it good for them? And if so, is that something we want to replicate? And uh, by the way, I also just want to suggest here that you know, um, if we find out that they're all getting fired, right, maybe we want to revisit you know, uh, what we want to be doing in our own daily work. So examples of uh, experience report, repeat experience reports, 20% uh, of all the programming that you see in this conference are repeat experience reports. And I'm so delighted that you know, we have uh, this incredible uh, group of leaders who are sharing what they're doing. And I think in general, they are doing bigger, better, greater things, making even a more material contribution to their own organizations. So that's repeat experience reports. Second are new experience reports. So experience reports are fantastic because uh, it's, it's a way to show that DevOps is possible anywhere, right? that, that we can negate objections. As um, my friend Jason Cox, who's on the program committee, he says, I, as someone on the DevOps journey, I am always looking for new experience reports to show my own leadership. Sometimes it's very helpful to be able to say, even XYZ and ABC do it. Right? Uh, even they are doing DevOps. So for, your, uh, for you, Think about what examples you want to put in those blanks. Sometimes it's a competitor. Sometimes it's a stodgy organization you know, that you would never believe are doing DevOps. Right? And so that is the purpose of why we have experience reports. Uh, examples of this um, uh, comprise 20% of all the programming. And here are some great examples of organizations presenting for the first time. And you know, I'm so delighted. And by the way, this is where uh, so many of our new discoveries and people entering the community really come from uh, this portion of the programming. So let's get to the, uh, let's get us to the next one. And I guess to motivate this one, I think it's best to show this picture. So this is Jason Cox from Disney. And uh, uh, he said, Gene, this is my unhappy face. Once again, this was a really great conference for development, but it wasn't as great for operations. So he told me that four years, uh, uh, last year. right? And each time my response was, um, yeah, you're right. We'll try harder next time. But uh, we were brainstorming, and we decided to do something very different starting uh, in London uh, of 2018. That was a couple of months ago. And we actually created a separate programming track for it. We actually put a, out a call for presentations. And in this long blog post, we actually articulated what types of talks we were looking for. Uh, we even specifically outlined uh, what specific topics uh, over the next two years, we want to learn more about. In other words, uh, in a world where CI, CD is a given, right? I mean, no, that's not true, but what comes next? What are the things that we need to be looking about? What, what do the funding models look like? What do we do from a leadership perspective? So all of that uh, has resulted in a next generation operation and programming track uh, that represents 20% of the programming. So our first trial of this was in London. and. Um, I think the results were fantastic. It definitely brought a different flavor to the conference. And in my mind, some of those were absolutely the highlight of the conference. By the way, um, Ann Perry, can you put into the Slack channel the link um, that shows all of these in a Google Sheet so you can sort of, if 
you are interested in these topics, this is probably the easiest way to go find those talks. It's not as obvious as it is in the schedule. So use that Google Doc in the Slack channel. All right, spanning uh, the business technology divide. The goal of this is based on the observation that increasingly technology leaders the obstacles they face are no longer in the traditional technology value stream. You know, instead of dev versus test versus ops versus security, it really is the technology leaders versus something external to them, like business leadership, like legal security compliance, um, and so forth. Uh, powerful project management offices, powerful functional silos. And so the goal is to have business leaders co-presenting with technology leaders. And I don't mean just standing on a stage, right? I mean rabid fans who are grateful for the work that the technology leaders are doing because every goal, dream, and aspiration they have is because of the technical greatness that uh, yeah, this community is creating. So um, to motivate how this happened, I should show this one. This is Courtney Kistler from Nike, who's been on the program committee for many years, and she said, I want what Jason got. So, and by the way, what I've learned is Courtney gets what Courtney asks for. Uh, she is relentless and awesome. So that resulted in 15% uh, of the programming dedicated to this. Each one of these talks are a technology leader co-presenting with a business counterpart. And uh, we could have gone to, our goal was to get to 20%, but we could only get to 15% because there aren't enough of these. Uh, we asked every repeat speaker, you know, who can you present with outside of technology? And there weren't enough. So my ask for help to you is if you know of someone or you are someone that can uh, give this type of talk, please let me know in the Slack channel. Just DM me, right? And we will figure out a way to make that happen because I think this is a very important topic. Um, and by the way, I'm very pleased that Target is returning to the DevOps Enterprise stage and sharing the continuation of the journey that was started by Heather Mickman and Ross Clanton. Ross Clanton is actually here today. So uh, that is something that I find very satisfying. And then bringing in the experts that we need. You know, I think every one of these technology leaders, they are piecing together a body of knowledge that does not really formally exist yet. In other words, 10 years from now, they'll be teaching it in you know, some sort of executive MBA course, but for now, we're all cobbling it together. And so the goal is to reach out and uh, into those domains where we want to learn more about and bring those experts here to teach us. And so uh, I think it's about 15% of the programming is dedicated to certain topic areas that we want to learn more about, so such as product leadership, workplace engagement and burnout, lean budgeting and cost management, dynamic learning organizations, uh, getting CEO buy-in, conservative orthodoxy, and so forth. Again, if those are interesting to you, seek those out. These are world-class experts uh, that we've brought here for you. The last thing I'm going to share is maybe attendee goals, but from a perspective of someone who loves conferences. In fact, for the first year of the DevOps Enterprise Summit, almost 50% of the speakers were people that I met at a conference. Some of my favorite lifelong collaborators I met at a conference. Our program committees are prolific lovers of going to conferences. And I have a strong suspicion that you will also meet collaborators that will be your lifelong collaborators you know, for the rest of your career. However, uh, there have been situations where at a conference, I felt like one, uh, that I couldn't get on the other side of the velvet rope. In other words, I saw the people who I wanted to talk to, but they were somehow inaccessible. They were shuffled off into a room, right, hidden from view, like there was a party that I wasn't invited to, right, and that didn't feel so good. Uh, I remember uh, being in a room of, you know, full of people where there were actually, I knew that there were people who wanted to solve the same things I wanted to, but I didn't know who they were, where they were, or how I could meet them. And so, our goal here is to make sure that you have those opportunities to meet those people. Um, one way is that you'll hear every speaker say, they will end with their presentation with, here's what we don't know how to do, or here's how we're, what we're looking for help with. Right? So here, if you have expertise they can share with the speaker that will help them, by all means do so. And I think these are the th conditions that help create a mutual ex mutually exothermic communities. You know, communities that are actually el helping each other. And so to help make that happen, I asked a longtime friend of mine for help and to co-host this event to make that happen. So let me introduce Jeff Gallimore, co-founder and partner at Excella, a longtime friend of the DevOps Enterprise community. Jeff, please come out and describe what we've done to help make that happen. It's the best day. <laughs> Thanks, G. This is so cool. <laughs> All right. Um, when Gene asked me to, uh, to help with the, uh, the attendee experience, to help support the attendee experience, um, 
it was a really meaningful moment for me because I have been to all of the DevOps Enterprise Summits in the US and the last one in June in the UK. And from those experiences, I can tell you that the DevOps Enterprise community is, is my community. You all are my community. And that's why this is so meaningful for me when I get to have a role in helping you all have an amazing experience. Um, now, Gene uh, talked about the programming committee and, uh, and the amazing lineup of speakers that they have put together. Uh, and they will blow your minds with the things that they know and the things that they've done. You are definitely going to get uh, some great insights and some great ideas that you can take back with you uh, to, uh, to where you work. But those interactions are primarily one way. Those are from the speaker on the stage to you in the audience. Uh, and what we wanted to do was really create an opportunity for the two-way sharing, because we all know that we get a ton of value from the two-way sharing. So we wanted to create opportunities for you to interact with the speakers up on the stage and a way for you to interact with each other. So the first of those opportunities that we have is Slack. So this is an, uh, an experiment that we ran at uh, the DevOps Enterprise Summit in London. Uh, and we are bringing that experiment back across the pond because it worked there and we are going to bring it back to the United States and we're going to do it here. So we're going to use Slack for a lot of the stuff that we use Slack in our daily work here at the summit. So what Slack is great for is the individuals and interactions and we're going to use it for that. Uh, you can engage with the speakers, the sponsors, each other. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we're going to do is going to be in Slack. We also intend for that DevOps Enterprise Summit Slack workspace uh, to live on after this conference so that the uh, relationships that you've built and the interactions that you've had can continue after the event is over. Now you also notice that we have a mobile app. So just so everybody's clear on what the mobile app is for and what Slack is for, the mobile app is for uh, the session feedback and the schedule and the Slack is we're going to use for what Slack is really good for, which is all of the individual and group interactions. We have a block of networking time set aside on Monday and Tuesday, today and tomorrow, from 3.15 to 4.35, uh, that you can choose uh, to spend in, in one of a number of different ways. Now, there, isn't going to be, there aren't going to be any other talks. There isn't going to be any other conference programming that's going on, so the FOMO should be low. Uh, and you can choose which of these you would like to go into. So let me go into a little bit of detail about what, which, uh, what each of these uh, is. So the first one uh, is the speaker's corner. So this, uh, this is an opportunity for you to go find the speaker uh, to ask questions. So if you didn't get a question answered in the session, then you can go find the speaker afterwards uh, and ask your question then. Or you can do what you might want to do, get a picture taken with a speaker if, if, if that's what you want to do. Uh, I hear they like that, at least some of them do. Mark, I'll be finding you later wherever you are to get your money, okay? <laughs> There you go. Okay, so here's the deal. The speakers from each day are gonna be spread out in the Chelsea mezzanine. Now the Chelsea mezzanine is right up there. So all of you folks that are sitting up there, you're in the right spot for where the speakers are gonna be for each day. Find the speaker, ask your question, and then if you've asked your question of the speaker, then let other people have a turn so that they can ask theirs. Now if you miss your opportunity to ask a question of the speaker in person, uh, you can also go to Slack. We have an Ask the Speaker channel in Slack. You can post your question there. Now, knowing this community, we have tons of questions, so the speaker may not be able to get to all of our questions. But if you have a thought on a question that somebody else asked, go ahead and weigh in. This, the channel is open to anybody uh, to contribute. So let's get uh, Dominica DeGrandis up here to talk about another opportunity that, that we all have to learn from each other through lean coffee. Hello everyone. When I travel around and work with different companies, one of the questions that I always ask people is what prevents you from getting work done? And an answer that almost always comes back is that we have got too many meetings and they're boring and unproductive. It's true, that's what people say. Well, Lean Coffee aims to change that. 
With Lean Coffee, people gather around a table, they propose and vote on topics that matter to them, and then the conversations begin. So Lean Coffee, this is our third year, maybe it's our fourth year, doing Lean Coffee, and people say that it's one of the most rewarding experiences of the, of the conference because of the interactions that happen. You know, with 1,800 people at the conference, we want to provide you with an opportunity to get to meet up with people who want to talk about the same topics that you do. Our speakers facilitate the Lean Coffees, so if you want an opportunity to sit down and hear more from a speaker at a at a table setting, this is your opportunity. Link Coffee works because the participants are in charge of the agenda, and everybody's voice gets to be heard. It's a place to hear what's going on and to be heard. These are happening today and tomorrow, same place, same time, 315 out in the Chelsea foyer. Just look for the tables with the post-it notes, and the topic for that table is written on a a happy hour tent-like menu. Well, at least that'll be the topic for the first conversation. It could be that's the topic for the whole time. It just depends on how the table votes. So all you have to do is just show up, find a seat at the table, and introduce yourself. I hope you join us. Thank you. Oh, forgot about the next slide, sorry. So here's the topics that are up for discussion, and you'll see these topics on the, uh, on the tent on the table. So just find a topic that you want to talk about and have a seat and join in. Thanks so much. Thanks, Rebecca. All right, the last of the networking opportunities that we've got is birds of a feather. Uh, this is going to happen in the Belmont Corridor, which is a little tricky to find. It's going to be upstairs, outside of the Expo Hall, make a left, make another left, and it's the corridor that's tucked away in the back there. Uh, this is an opportunity for you all to find each other and talk about topics that you all want to talk about. Here are the logistics of that. Uh, if you want to lead a discussion, a Birds of a Feather session, then post your topic in the Birds of a Feather Slack channel. If you want to participate in a discussion, then upvote one of those topics that's in the Slack channel so that the host knows that there's some interest. And then find each other in that Belmont corridor at 315. If you're the host, there are going to be table cards that you can write the topic down and stand up on one of the tables so that the other attendees can find you. And then it would be really great if you could post any notes or key revelations from the discussion back in the Slack channel. You can create a thread off the original topic. That would be fantastic. And then nothing says that you have to stop the conversation at 425. You can keep the conversation going in Slack or any other way that you want to. How many people have been to, uh, have participated in open spaces before? That maybe a DevOps days? Okay, great. So some of you are familiar with the law of two feet. For those of you that aren't, let me explain it to you. If you find yourself in a situation where you are neither learning nor contributing, then the law of two feet says use your own two feet to go find a place where you can, respectfully. <laughs> so if you're getting pulled into your phone more than you're getting pulled into the conversation, that might be a good opportunity for you to pull out and go find some place where you can contribute or learn more, okay? All right, which one do I choose? Lots of questions here. There's lots of opportunities. What's your learning goal? What's your energy level in the middle of the afternoon? Have you just had coffee? Do you need coffee? Do you want to contribute more? Do you want to consume more? These are different opportunities for you to get your learning objectives met and to match the energy level and the amount that you want to consume or contribute. Now, we also have a code of conduct here for this conference. We are all part of the same community, and we are all human beings. Last time I checked, so we all should be treating each other really, really well. This is the code of conduct. This is what we want uh, for this community, and it's intended to support the kind of environment that we want to have. Let me sum it up for you. Yeah. Let me sum it up for you. When somebody else is sharing, listen well. Share well when you have something to say. Respect everyone at all times and speak up if you see something or hear something that isn't consistent with the environment that we want for this community. Uh, if you have any issues, if you see anything that's out of sorts, the, then you can email help at itrevolution.com or uh, you can send a direct message to uh, MVK, the Slack handle MVK. So let me let you in on a little something here, okay? 
So MVK is the Slack handle for Marguerite Kim, who is the IT Revolution CEO and Gene's wife. <laughs> I have seen Marguerite in action. If there is something that needs to be handled, she will handle it, okay? All right, so I'd like to list all of your support in making sure that we create that kind of harassment-free environment that we want. Turn to the person next to you, give them a fist bump. Boom. Turn to the person on the other side, give them a fist bump. <laughs> All right, now we're locked in, excellent. Okay, some, some big thank yous for, for uh, organizations that made this event happen. First is the, one of the founding partners, IT Revolution. So the same people that brought us this event also brought you many of your favorite books that are sitting on your bookshelf, like The Phoenix Project and The DevOps Handbook. The other founding partner is Electric Cloud. And to share a few thoughts, let's bring out Sam Fell, who's the Vice President of Marketing at Electric Cloud, to share some more about their role in this event and the community. It's the best day best day. Thank you, Jeff. Pleasure. Hey, everybody. Really exciting to be here for the fifth iteration of the DevOps Enterprise Summit. Back in 2013, we invited Gene and Jez and a few other folks to join us at our company conference, our user conference. Maybe 150 people were there and the light bulbs that went off as the knowledge was shared about the benefits that DevOps could bring to companies like Intel and GE and GM was very obvious. And so Gene worked with us to say, hey, this is something that we should make sure we share with more people. And so in 2014, when we started the conference with Gene, and the IT revolution. We had about 300 people, and this year we're almost at 2,000, and it's fantastic. We're really excited to be here. How many of you are here to learn about DevOps? Raise your hand. How many of you are here, keep your hands up if you've got more than one person from your team here? <laughs> Five people from your team, keep your hands up. 10 people from your team. Okay, a lot of folks sent a lot of people to this conference to learn new skills, right? Skills are very important. You have to mind the skills gap. Understanding in this day and age, with the pace of change, the new tools, the new technology, the new practices, it's very hard to keep up. And how do you know what things the people that you came here with are gonna need to learn? Everybody is, we're, we're not cattle, we're pets. We're humans, right? So we're all a little bit different. So we're really excited today, on behalf of the DevOps Institute, to announce a new set of research that they're launching. The survey is being fielded today. You can go and take the survey immediately. The report will be available in the spring of 2019. And it's called the Upskilling Enterprise DevOps Skills Report. And what it's going to allow us to do is to understand, as an industry, where those skill gaps are so that we can, as a community, work to address them. And so we're sponsoring this report alongside of CloudBees, um, and we're really excited, and we hope that you guys will participate. Now, you may not want to wait till 2019 to understand what kinds of skills you want to be giving to your teams. And so you may know that, yeah, you know what, I think we'd like to get some more security into our pipelines, or I'm an executive and I'm trying to lead a transformation at my organization. How do I get started? And so we've launched Electric Cloud University, which is a subscription-based training and certification program that we've launched in association with the DevOps Institute with a mix of DevOps and product topics delivered online, on-site, and using a learning management system to help managers track employee progress across all the different tracks that they're participating in. And just last weekend, we were joined by a couple of our advisors uh, to do some of these workshops. We did a fantastic, if the G2, G3 crowd is, uh, a team is in the, in the audience, raise your hands, they did a fantastic DevOps simulation for newbies to understand in a gamified way what DevOps is and how it's beneficial. We had Gary Groover do a transformational session for executives so that they understood how to bring that learning back. And we did obviously some product training as well, which was great and people enjoyed it. If you're interested in participating in something like this, John Willis is actually going to be doing a workshop this Thursday. We have a couple of seats left. If you're interested 
get Docker on your machine, and come on by and learn how to hack into the pipeline and figure out how to make more secure software with our partners Sonatype and John Willis. So I'm hoping that 2019 really becomes the year where upskilling becomes something that you guys are all thinking about, and we're happy to be here to help you do that. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sam. Okay, some more thank yous to some more sponsors, or platinum sponsors, BMC, CA, ConnectAll, Deloitte, GitHub, IBM, Sonatype, TaskType, Tricentis, VMware, and ZBA Labs. See, I practiced that. Thank you to them. Thanks to our amazing gold sponsors, and our fantastic silver sponsors, and our media sponsors for getting the word out about this amazing DevOps enterprise community. We've got a couple other special, or a few other special sponsors. We've got Sonatype, who is sponsoring the Lightning Talks tomorrow night. You will definitely not want to miss that. Nor will you want to miss the industry party tonight that is being sponsored by Delphix. And then Nike is sponsoring our Wi-Fi. Just a little bit of information coming up shortly about that. Now those thank yous to the sponsors were genuine. This event doesn't happen without their support. They are a big part of this community too. So go upstairs into the expo hall, talk with them, show them some love, let them know that we appreciate their support. Now I mentioned we had Wi-Fi. Everybody now has the information. And whoever came up with a password for the Wi-Fi is brilliant. I want to work on that team. <laughs> Now, unlike this community's capacity to learn, the Wi-Fi capacity is limited. Please limit your use to two devices so that uh, you're considerate of your fellow attendees' ability to tweet, text, slack, and surf. And you're here on site. Don't live stream. Don't live stream. <laughs> Okay, a few more notes on safety. Keep your bags with you at all times. Security announcements, anything that you need to know is gonna happen on the PA system. Keep your, don't be like me, keep your badges with you and on you because security is gonna be checking to make sure that you can, you are who you say you are and that you can, you're supposed to be here. Uh, and if you have any concerns, contact any of the Cosmopolitan hotel staff. They're gonna have badges on their, on their uh, shirts, um, or any of the IT Revolution staff, they are gonna, their badges are going to say IT Revolution, they're going to have a staff ribbon, and their lanyards are going to be purple. If you have any questions or you need any help, post in Summit Help on Slack, send an email to help at itrevolution.com. If all else fails, you can direct message me in Slack. That's my Slack handle. Whew, that's it. Let's get into the sessions. Have an amazing time out there. Gene, I'm going to hand it back to you to introduce this year's first speaker. Thank you, Jeff. So our first speaker.